some word problems dealing with multiplication and division. And like I kind of mentioned when we were doing subtraction and addition word problems, the GED probably won't have word problems that are this straightforward, just dealing with multiplication, division, um, addition, subtraction. However, it's good to start practicing how to pull things out of word problems. Later, um, after we kind of get through some of the algebra, we'll do a bunch of different types of word problems that are a little more complex. So I want to keep working with word problems. So by the time you're getting ready for the GED, you know kind of how to pull information from these word problems. All right, so look at, let's look at this one. Sarah decides to give away some old books. She has 58 books, but decides to keep 10 of them. She wants to split up the rest of the books evenly to donate to the three elementary schools. How many books go to each school? All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a different colored pen so it's easier to um, see. In the previous word problems lecture where we talked about addition and subtraction, I mentioned circling some key numbers in their units and then underlying what the question is asking. So when I go through here, she has 58 books. So I'm going to circle that in case that becomes important. But she decides to keep 10 of them. She wants to split up the rest of the books evenly to the three elementary schools. So how many books? So that's what we want to know. How many books go to each school? So in the end, I want to know how many books per school. So we start out with 58 books. Are we going to split those 58 books up between the three schools? Well, no, because she decided to keep 10 of them. So she's going to keep 10 of them and not give them away. We want to subtract it from the giveaway pile. So I'm going to subtract 10. I'm left with 48. All right, so we have 48 books and three elementary schools. So thinking back to what operations we know, we know addition, we know subtraction, we know multiplication, we know division. If we are splitting them up evenly between three schools, what are we going to be doing? Well, splitting them up evenly, dividing them evenly, division. So we have 48 books between three schools. Let's put our 48 in the house and divide by three. Three goes into four, one time. Three times one is three. Bring down my eight. Three goes into 18, six times. Three times six is 18. We have nothing left over. So 16 books will go to each school. All right, I'm gonna give you a second to try this next one. bought 36 box of crayons. Each box contains 12 crayons. How many crayons did Crystal buy in total? So I'm going to go ahead and take my Ren pen and I'm going to circle a couple things. On the test you won't have colored pens, but I'm just doing this so it's easier for you to see. So Crystal bought 36 boxes of crayons. Each box contains 12 crayons. How many crayons did Crystal buy in total? So we want to know how many crayons total. So there are 12 crayons per box. Whenever I hear the word per or I can put per into something, it usually means multiplication. So if you were saying 12 crayons, per three people, usually we're going to be doing some sort of multiplication or division. So 36 boxes of crayons. So we have 36 boxes 
and each box has 12 crayons. So what are we going to be doing? If we wanna find out how many total, well, I know that I need to have 36 boxes and each box has 12 crayons. That's 36 groups of 12. I know this is going to be multiplication. So I'm going to multiply 36 times 12. I'm gonna erase this just so it's easier to understand. All right, and so we have three times two, which will give us 12, carry my one. Two times three is six, plus one is seven. All right, I'm done with that two. I'm going to erase what I carried. Drop down a line, add a zero. Again, look back at your notes from the multiplication section if you need a little bit of a reminder. One times six is six, one times three is three. So I'm gonna add all those together. 2, 13, 4, 432 crayons. All right, I'm going to give you another one to try on your own. question. Um, I think that it really causes you to sit there and think. So I hope you took the time to really sit and think about this question, even if you couldn't get to the right answer that you sat and you thought about what this question is really asking. So let's look at it. A school has 18 classes with 35 students in each class. In order to reduce the class size to 30, how many new classes must be formed. All right. Whew. So there's a lot of different parts to unpack of this question. So first of all, we have 18 classes with 35 students per class. In order to reduce the class size to 30, well, first I need to figure out how many students I have total, right? So if it's 18, classes with 35 students per class. That sounds like multiplication to me. So again, I'm going to erase this just so it's a little easier to understand. So I have 8 times 5. All right, I'm done with that 5. Erase what I carried, drop down a line and add a 0. 3 times 8, 24. Add them together. Again, if you are um, struggling with that multiplication, make sure you're looking at your notes, looking at those steps. The more you follow the same steps over and over, and the more you hear me say this, hear the say the same things over and over and over again. When you sit down to do a problem, it's going to come really fast because. You've trained your brain to think step one, step two, step three, step four, step one, step two, step three, step four. So by the time you get to the exam, it's going to be cake. All right, so let's finish this up. So we have 630 students total. Well, now the question is asking how many classes, new classes must be formed if we want to reduce the class size to 30. So now we have 630 students and we want 30 students per class. Well, let's divide because we want to split them into groups of 30. So dividing them into groups of 30. So let's take 630 divided by 30. So 30 goes into 63. I know 30 times 2 will give me 60. So I'm going to use that right here. So 30 times 2 is 60. I'm going to subtract, bring down my 0. 30 goes into 31 time. So I've got 21 classes. All right, so 21 classes. Am I done? No, because if we really have to look at this question, 
It wants to know how many new classes. So if we started out with 18, we need to find the difference that sounds like subtraction. So this is one of those ones where they really try to trip you up. They try to get you to say 21 instead of saying we have 21 classes now. We had 18 previously. When I subtract that, I get three new classes. So this is more like something you'll see on the GED where they cause you to really think logically, try to get you to work through these problems. All right, so in the next one, we're going to be looking at division and multiplication with positive and negative numbers.